Welcome back. I'm Ted Ward and welcome to the 2023 Chevrolet Corvette. This is a 3LT with the 70th anniversary package and obviously a convertible. It's winter here in New England and I'm going to try to do some of this drive top down despite the fact that it's under 40 degrees. But don't worry, we are on Michelin snow tires to help it hook up a little bit, which is pretty great that Chevy's sending out these cars on snow tires because they really do believe in the fact that this needs to be driven all of the time. This car has the Z51 package, which gives it a little extra power, some better brakes, performance rubber when it's not on snow tires, and some aero stuff. And I've got to say, this mid-engine C8 is the performance bargain of the century, despite the fact that it may not have quite the same curb appeal as the Lamborghinis and Ferraris, but only when you put them next to each other. This car stands on its own and looks incredible. The only problem is when you put it next to like a 458, that rear end starts to look a little tall. It's such a bizarre thing because this is gorgeous and it's really incredible what Chevrolet has done with the Corvette and finally transformed it into the mid-engine flagship it deserved to be. And because it's got the 3LT package, this has all of the luxury. So while the C8 starts under $70,000, dollars which is why this is such a bargain this one is optioned out to about a hundred and even at a hundred thousand dollars this looks really really good the gt2 buckets i love the two-tone they're heated they're cooled we've got this suede heated steering wheel i shouldn't say suede it's alcantara they say microfiber and i kind of dig the fact that gm on their on their configurator will say it's microfiber because that is essentially what it is alcantara is just microfiber and they're not bullshitting you trying to make it sound fancy which i appreciate that's a very honest and realistic thing to do but it goes to show that spec really matters. Now, I don't necessarily care for all of the frilly things with the with the leather upholstery and the Alcantara and stuff, but the Z51 package, I think, is something that you cannot go without because it gives you a sportier rear end ratio as well as the limited slip differential. And that's gonna help this thing get off the line and actually perform the way it's meant to. So, in terms of being a usable thing, I mean, we're out here in the winter, and this car, let's see if we can get this open. Click, click. There we go. All right, so <laughs> we have a reasonable frunk, and actually, it's it's fairly deep. Now, I think like a Boxster or Cayman has a little bit more room up front, but this is fine, and I would just recommend using a plush or like you know moldable duffel bag rather than regular luggage. And in the back, despite the fact that it is a convertible, you still have a trunk and that's reasonable space again you put you can put a couple you know soft duffels in there and you'd be just fine and the rear end of this car has such a great presence i think this really looks good on the road it's turned a lot of heads and uh we can start it from behind because i think it's worth hearing so we'll double tap <laughs> the whole car shakes when you start it up and man did they program this thing to start with a bang you are definitely going to wake the dead at least your neighbors who are sleeping if you get up early so let's get out there and take it for a drive one of my favorite features on this car is this little piece of glass right here, because just like on a Lamborghini Aventador Roadster, when the roof is up, you can put this glass in this down position and it allows you to hear the exhaust behind you. So it really enhances the driving experience and gives you all the theater of that V8 in the back. This interior really has fighter jet cockpit vibes. You really are just kind of nestled in this little area and this giant center stack separates you from your passenger, but that means there's not a whole lot of room for buttons so they put them all in a row now i would have to really get used to this because their climate controls are really spaced out so you've got your driver's side your passenger side your fan speed and then your seat settings so we'll throw our heated seats on it's a little nuts however it makes a lot of sense if you look at it for a while you just have to get used to it um, right here we've got our mode selector next to our gear selector that's like actually very Honda. This reminds me a lot of the NSX. Um, and then up here we have our traction control. We have our nose lift. 
and that works pretty quick. So I've actually, I've really enjoyed that, uh, being able to go up to a set of train tracks or a steep um, entrance to a driveway or parking lot and be able to pop that on very quickly. And then we've got our mode selector here where we can go from sport to track. We can hear exhaust get a little beefier. And then our track mode gives us this display. My only complaint so far about the displays is just that it takes a second. Um, it's, it's not like this very quick, seamless, sort of thing like it it, it, it it could be smoother uh, with that programming on this LCD display let's pop it into sport mode we'll go into drive and down here you can also hit the M button for manual because that is going to give you control over the paddle shifters which you could use anyway but it'll hold your gear and leave it in that gear with this eight speed dual clutch transmission this DCT from GM actually quite impressive and I gotta say when they said they were going to a no manual Corvette and it's gonna be a dual clutch boy was I nervous but they they really did something special gets off the line so quickly. What I'm so impressed with, especially the Z51 package, because it also gives, I, there's so many things the Z51 package gives you. I'm, I'm missing things already. It gives you a, a revised suspension as well, the magnetic ride. And that goes a long way because GM's mag ride is phenomenal. That's no secret. Everybody knows you gotta get a good mag ride suspension from GM and they are the kings of this. So I think even though the base price of these Corvettes is somewhere around like $65,000 for a coupe, you've got to at least option out that Z51 package. I think that's the way to have these cars. The square steering wheel is a little odd. It takes a bit to get used to it. But it's not bad. It does the job and actually it helps visibility because when you're driving in a straight line, it, it, it leaves that line of sight completely open. love the rev limiter in this car. I think it's really fun. I think it sounds outrageous. So even though I'm, I'm bouncing off of it, not accelerating as quick as I could be, I, I do find some joy in that because this 6.2 liter engine sounds outrageous. It's got 495 horsepower, 490 without the Z51 trim. It's an extra five pound feet of torque and an extra five horsepower. I don't know how far that necessarily goes, but I think when it comes down to it, it's the total package of the brakes, suspension, power, that rear end, the LSD, all this stuff really comes together into a beautiful package. This exhaust note is not subtle. And it gives you this incredible crack under the upshifts, which really lets you know that you're driving something performance oriented. It's just so quick and I love the crack because it's a short crack and it kind of indicates just how quickly this DCT is shifting for you. Now, two things that bother me a little bit about this car right off the bat. Number one is the seating position. Um, I'm as low as I can get in the car right now, and I just wish I could get a little bit lower. Just a little bit lower, it would make me feel, uh, it would make me feel more like I'm in a Porsche bucket seat, which is something that I, I get spoiled with a little bit when you drive a GT3 or a, a GT4 or Spider. You sit so low in those cars, and I just wanna be a little bit lower in this car. And the other thing is the throttle mapping has taken me a little bit of time to adapt to. It's not bad. It's not like, oh my goodness, I can't drive the car. It's just that I feel like I need a real bootful. And obviously it changes between the different modes, but I do feel that I need to be really wide open when I'm asking for it. And I think I just want a little more up front, which typically is not what I'm wanting, but I feel like they, they dulled it down um, and, and really ramped up that throttle map after like 40, 30 or 40% uh, uh, pedal travel. Boy, do I wish we had access to that runway right now. 
914, baby. Oh, they dialed in these shifts like so well. It feels incredible the way this thing just rips through gears. The one thing that I'm not thrilled with, the plasticky paddles, but again, we're at like a pretty low price point here for a car like this. But they just don't have the most satisfying click. They immediately respond. But I just want a little more in the way of that tactile feel, which I don't think takes that, that much to do. And maybe that's something that will come later with the car. So let's try a little bit of a launch. So. There's different ways to do this. Now, if we're sitting here and I just go foot on the brake and floor it, it's gonna top out at about 1800 RPM. But if I hit traction off and go into performance competitive mode, competitive mode, it should go 3500 RPM. And that is a different story. And guys, we're on snow tires. This is snow tires, okay? How crazy is that? All right, let's pull over here real quick. I just wanna show you how, how nice this roof system is. So if I wanna just pop this up, because we'll go out on the highway a little bit in the car, I'll pull this. And then I'm going to use this button to lower that glass. And that's the ticket. That's the key to this car in terms of like driving experience. You got to have that glass down. Now I've lost something in the way of visibility here. So this mid engine sacrifice you got to make, you lose that rear quarter. So you've got to be thoughtful when you're pulling out into traffic and stuff. This is a car where the modes matter. In terms of suspension, like it's really wild to have a car that can kind of soak up bumps the way this does. You don't have to feel like you're driving some delicate supercar that can't handle something. I mean, remember where this car is built. It's made for crummy Midwest roads. So when the boys from Detroit design a car, they're designing it for themselves. They wanna be able to drive around their local roads without getting beat up or without cracking the car open and you know new england's not a whole lot better so sure don't go slamming into potholes but what's nice is if i hit these little bumps it's not beating me up i don't feel like i'm destroying the car it's so balanced it's so composed i don't have any fear of like this rear end coming out on me unexpectedly it just gets the job done Wait to drive the Z06. It's really playful. I mean, you just wanna you you just wanna dive into it. Like that's it. It's fun. You know, you can really send it. <laughs> Corvettes. There's Corvettes in the past that are a lot more scary. Like a C7 was a really balanced, stable car. I'm not trying to say that, but like you drive a C6 and you start dipping into that throttle a bit, that torque can really eh, catch you off guard a little bit. You gotta be thoughtful about the way you apply. This car, I mean, sure, you still have lots of torque and you gotta be thoughtful, but the way this puts power down and the way this chassis, I mean, I wish you could feel what I'm feeling because like you can feel the nose push a little bit and then you just get off the power and and it, and it tucks it in. I mean, it's, it's like a GT3. The thing I like most about the C8 Corvette is that it has brought an exotic platform, an exotic driving experience to the masses. This is something that typically you would not have any access to under, let's say, $200,000 to $250,000. This is incredible that you can get a mid-engine, nearly 500 horsepower rear-wheel drive sports car for $65,000, $70,000. 
it's just it's absolutely outrageous and i know you're thinking like well we've had lotus avora and elise for a long time i'm telling you that is not the same it is not the same those are balanced beautiful great cars they never feel like real like supercars this starts to approach supercar vibes and that is miraculous and it's a real testament to what they're doing over at gf because <laughs> i mean geez this is their first go at it too that's really outrageous so while the performance tire counts up because i'm never going to get to 60 here I've just got to say, I, I, I'm really thrilled about my first taste of the C8. Um, does it have some flaws? Yeah. I mean, I feel like the infotainment system's a little delayed. There's things like that that can be improved upon. Um, I want the seat to go a little lower. I want the throttle mapping to change a little bit. Those, you know, but that, those are all things that aren't deal breakers to me. I'm used to the seating position already. I'm, I'm adapting to that throttle mapping. Um, and again, anything that I have a complaint about, I just think about that price and it goes away because at the end of the day, this car absolutely does what it set out to do, which was to be a performance monster to just, just take the Corvette and bring it to another level that it could not have possibly been on as a front rear car. This layout, this mid rear car is so incredible. So thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. Dual clutches can sometimes feel a little clunky. I think this does an incredible job, especially getting off the line with that clutch engagement. It does a really nice job of being smooth. It, it, it does disappear behind the car for the most part, and that cannot be said for all dual clutches. BMWs moved back to ZF automatics. I mean, the, the, the days of DCT have kind of died out in a lot of performance cars just because they are kind of a pain sometimes, but I think GM did a really nice job in the tuning of this car.